All right, guys. In honor of destroying the F-22 profile plane so that all my work from yesterday was completely undone, except it's gonna take 10 minutes to fix it because I'm just gonna put a new ESC in it and a new motor. I'm gonna fly this wonderful F-14 Hobby King Special. If you're stupid enough to buy this for $300, I have some things I wanna sell you. <laughs> <laughs> I got it for cheap. It is a cheap plane. It is really fun. It is not worth $300. Be prepared to be frustrated if you buy this for $300. It is this cool plane, but if you're gonna spend 300 bucks, spend another 250 bucks and get the free wing. Anyway, cool lines, fun to fly. Don't worry, the wing sweep mechanism has been completely redone by yours truly. I have a nine channel spectrum receiver, no stabilization, I know it's a miracle. These things are really high quality too. Don't worry, they're gonna break immediately when you get them. I gotta glue this one, but don't worry, it'll break when we land. Televon set up. All sorts of complex mixing. I have flaps and spoilerons. And when I say flaps, I mean flapperons. Flapperons and spoilerons. The spoilerons work great on this plane. The flapperons do not work so good. So if you're gonna do something, do nothing or do spoilerons, which means that both of your aileron surfaces go up and uh, it will help with hand launching. All right, throttle cuts off. Also, I did differential thrust, which is always kind of nice when you're trying to yaw the airplane that doesn't have rudders. I have a feeling with rudders, this plane would actually perform pretty good. If I was doing it all again, I'd probably make a cavity for a bigger battery. I'd definitely not worry about landing gear. You don't need landing gear for this plane. I would magnetically attach these things, cut in your vents for extra inlet, I'd put some rudders on it and I would uh, fiberglass the whole bottom. I used epoxy and it's heavy, but it did work generally. You can also take the fins off the bottom, but I kind of like the way it looks. It helps with the lines and uh, the nose is very susceptible to damage. So you're just going to have to get used to the fact that it's going to get destroyed. So, or anyway, you could have brought the free one for about four and a half. And uh, here goes nothing. <laughs> Out of the spoiler on. She's got ups on 4S 2200 60C Zippy Compact. Rolls like a banshee. You're going to need a ton of Expo to get this plane. Don't worry, the Expo is not a problem. And yes, you want to kind of reserve full bore. Uh, tight turns because you can break the wings off in this plane pretty easy. Try for a low-ish pass. Beautiful guys. Beautiful gets the sky, guys. Watch the glide, guys. This is just glide, no throttle at all. Keep her downhill and she'll fly forever, as long as it doesn't hit the ground. Now let's do a wing sweep for you. She gets a little wonky on wing sweepage. Got a 10 second sweep there. It looks sure pretty, doesn't it? You're gonna need to move so you're out of the way of the tree. I do not typically fly with the wings swept because it's a little scary. The controls get so dang wonky. If I had a stabilizer, I would stabilize the main control surfaces being the televons because that's what would keep you going straight. And then the ailerons could be used for flaps or flapperons or whatever. She'll fly upside down great. In fact, that makes me think I should do some more expo on the uh, on the uh, the down sweep and less on the up sweep. She looks sure fast, doesn't she? Fifty percent power here. Going for a relaxing stroll around the park. Going to make it just above these trees. We're going to sneak in here between these trees. 
about 30% throttle. That thing looks so sweet, guys. I would say go get one, but unless you're insane, <laughs> or you just have an unlimited budget. If you have an unlimited budget, who cares, you know? But I'll be honest with you, this plane is not worth 300 bucks. You will be disappointed, I guarantee it. You'd be better to spend 300 bucks on my beat up piece of crap plane than you would to go buy it from Hobby King for 300 bucks. Cause you're gonna have to fix a bunch of stuff still yet. Sure does look cool, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Actually, I'd like to make a profile F-14. Oh, and let's show you the yaw, guys. See, you just barely, you got a hint of yaw control. The engines are too close to the center of mass to really yaw the plane. Okay, let's show you flaperons here. Here's flaperons. Slows it down, but it gets wonky on controls because your outboard control surface is going downward. Now, when we do flap or spoilerons, watch this, guys. This is spoilerons. I just clicked into it. Zero throttle, just kind of forcing the nose down a little bit. And she slows down, but she's controllable. Because you have the control surface is on the outboard sweep there. Okay, so that's completely out of throttle. I'm out of the spoiler ons now, by the way. Oh, hey, another thing too that's really awesome about a 4S configuration on this is that I've got the stock USCs and stock motors and stock brushless fans and everything is the stock. With the exception of the battery itself, which there wasn't anything stock, it's a plug and fly. There's my battery, I gotta land it, guys. Okay, spoiler rounds are deployed, it's gonna slow down the flight. And that's one of the reasons why this plane is a tough plane to fly, is because when it dies, it dies like right now. And I had 11 seconds left on my timer. So get your time set right and you'll do better than that. I usually land it pretty close to my feet or I'll find tall grass and land it in the tall grass. Uh, but we'll pause it and give you an aftermath in case we broke, any, broke anything. Okay. All right guys, so I went and retrieved the plane and you can see this one that was uh, on the way to break is broke, which honestly it's no big deal because it was ugly before. I'll just CA it back on like that and let it break the next time again. And then my auto battery recover mechanism has done its thing. Looks like we have a little crack here. Just get used to the, that type of damage with this plane. Um, also, I wanna show you how I configured the battery. It's very awkward, cause like, even though you can fit a 2200 4S in here, well, you can't even fit a 2200 3S like you're supposed to fly with it. But uh, you gotta figure out a way to pass the leads from the front to the back. And like that little tape thing I did, that was all yours truly. Um, I made a, a piece to slide like clear plastic and then I hogged out this foam here and then I hogged out some foam here and so when you close this you have the ability to actually take the battery out otherwise it gets a little bit puffy and uh, you see the receiver sits down inside this pocket so that's one of the receivers and then I've got a uh, satellite receiver up front under the canopy and incidentally how do you take out the mains? They're super easy, they just slide out to the sides. Um, how do you take out the, the nose gear is a little bit more complex. I do have a video showing how to do that. If you guys would be crazy enough to go and spend 300 bucks on this thing. Um, but basically under these two screws, then this is glued, you rip it off. And then these chairs just lift out. They're just pressured set on top of there. There might be a little bit of glue holding it. And then underneath there's a servo that directly attaches to a linkage that holds down to the uh, landing gear. So, like I said, if you get too close, it ain't very pretty, but it sure passes the 100 foot test. And when you're going by it like, well, I would call it 60, 70 miles an hour, it looks pretty awesome. And it does sound good. Opening up those holes makes a big difference. That's probably one of the biggest performance enhancing, well, between 4S and that. The other thing is you can see, I took off all those stupid ball bearing as they broke, I've redone them with just regular clevis style, whatever these things are called. And um, one issue is when you belly land a plane, you're susceptible to hitting these things on the ground. And so, like, they want to try to keep these clean lines up here and make sure that there's room for the wing to sweep. But for practical purposes, that servo should have been mounted in a different way. And then also these things, they bite into the foam. So eventually you run out of bite and it just, just one thing after another. This plane is fun to watch fly, but it's kind of like every time you fly it, 
it could be the last flight and you just have to be ready for that so anyway thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe